Sound is good? All right, I don't have anything displaying that the sound is good, but okay. All right, cool, sound is good, even though I've got no sound display. All right. Okay, so supposedly sound is good. Um, my program says that it's not, but okay, if everybody can hear me fine. Perfect, let's hope it stays that way. All right, welcome to the live review of the Moses or Sabfoil W1000. Um, this has been my favorite winging wing for, well, I've been testing the prototype, I think four months now. Um, I really fell in love with this wing over the time I've been testing it. And yeah, so let's get straight into it then. This wing is what we call a proper high aspect wing. It's got an aspect ratio of 10. And that, my opinion is that's where high aspect starts. It's got a one meter span. It's got a 13 and a half centimeter cord from here to here. And it has a surface area of, I think, um, 937, I think, if I remember correctly, um, square centimeters. Now, it weighs about 850 grams. It's got a quite thin profile. As you can see from here, you've got slight um, gull wing shape to it. There's no winglets on here. It is basically the racing wind foil wing. However, this fits on the 647 kite foil fuselage and uses um, the kite foil fuselage stabilizers. Uh, my favorite setup for this is with the S400 stabilizer, but it works very well with the race stabilizer, the uh, S421. It also works with the 325, the 330. And uh, for people who like it a bit slower and a bit more relaxing, um, you can even put the SUP, uh, the surf stabilizers on, like the uh, 450 or the 483. However, you need to put one of the shims underneath there to, first of all, lift it off um, the fuselage a bit so it doesn't sort of get scratched, and also to adjust the angle to that. I find the one degree shim from Moses works pretty good for that. So, first thing about it, people ask, what is the wind range or performance on this with a wing? Um, for me, this compares quite well to the, um, uh, the W790 for low end. I need about 15 knots with a five meter wing for this to work well. You can go in a bit less with a lot of pumping, but it works quite well from the 15 knot or above range. Um, top end, never really found top end with this. I've been going consistently over 30 knots with this wing. I've had it in super strong winds, um, really big waves. I have loved it for that. It is fast. It is super turny, very agile. Um, the wing tape, wing tip shape really doesn't mind breaching. It's like most of the other racing foils you can breach without having any ventilation travel down to the rest of the foil. So carving hard with the tips coming out of the water is definitely not an issue. Um, even though it's a race wing, it gets delivered with your standard um, gloss finish. Um, for winging, it doesn't really matter. If you're gonna wing foil race, uh, wind foil race with it, you probably wanna sand that to a race finish. But for most people, this is great. Um, what's also great for obviously is jumping. The acceleration you get from this when you pop out of the water is amazing. It gives you at least another meter or so height when you can jump. And also because it's not such a fat wing for, compared to, for example, the, the 1100 or the 950, um, landing hard is a lot easier and there's not as much stress on the board and the mast with this wing. So I really love using this for practicing freestyle with the winging. Um, it's just easier, you get more pop, you get more speed in your rotations. Um, so yeah, uh, you can understand why I really love this. 
Um, a lot of people always ask me, it's like, yeah, it's a high aspect wing, so it doesn't turn. Yes, it does. Um, actually, it doesn't really have that much to do with it being high aspect or not for its turning. A lot of the turning capability for this when you're winging with it, if you're using the kite fuselage, is that the kite fuselage is quite a bit shorter than the surf fuselage. Remember, the surf, surf fuselage is um, 71 centimeters, and you have essentially less than 75 centimeters on the kite foil fuselage, plus a smaller back wing. This makes the setup extremely lively and very turny. Um, you can carve almost on a point, especially if you yaw the board around. Um, the fact that you can breach the tips, you can actually throw a bit of water when you're actually um, doing a cutback on a wave. Um, the fact that it doesn't build the pressure so aggressively. It's a very progressive buildup of, of lift when you're pushing it. So you can push it actually quite hard and that lift comes progressively and that acceleration comes progressively. And it never seems to want to sort of stop, which is a problem with essentially the lower aspect wings like a 633, the 790. If you try to force a turnaround on a wave, it will essentially stop and ventilate. Whereas this will just progressively accelerate through your turn and give you a nice thing. It took me, I don't know, I would say almost two weeks to really um, get used to and appreciate um, the speed of the wing. The, the problem with having this much efficiency and speed is, especially I got this like at the end of summer and our waves aren't that big yet. So on the smaller waves, it would overtake one or two waves on our like main spot here in Puerto Lajas. Um, if I would ride it the same way I would normally ride um, the surf wings, for example, those typically tend to sit and lock in on the wave, whereas this is more like a short board. Um, get on a wave, it accelerates down, and if you don't turn, it'll accelerate away from the wave. And with waves being quite short together um, in the summer here, I would accelerate through the next two waves also before realizing I've over, actually overtaken those bumps. So you really need to realize that uh, once you get on the wave, you need to get ready to bottom turn and then cut back at the top of the wave, so to actually surf. So my best comparison uh, for people on this is uh, the surf wings, like on the 710 fuselage, like the 1100, the 950, 790, it's very much like in surfing, it's a longboard style of riding. You get on the wave, you sort of lock in, you can do lower, large radius turns, but you can't be too aggressive. Whereas with the 1000, you can be aggressive like on a shortboard, which means you get on the wave, you get to the bottom, bottom turn, go back up, turn there, and you can really, really maximize what you can do with on the wave. So this is why I, as soon as I have enough wind to use this wing, I will use it. Now, because this is on the kite fuselage, the geometry is different than on the 710 fuselage. You need to move your mast at least five centimeters forward um, compared to the position that you would ride your um, W1000 for. And if you have a 950, that's almost seven centimeters you need to move forward. The cool thing is that um, almost all the newer Moses uh, masts, like the 82, 72, and so on, they actually have six holes in the plates now, which means you can actually push the plate past actually the end of your tracks. Um, so you can get a little bit more distance out if you need it. Um, I need to do this on almost all my boards um, as they, because they are more or less set up for most surf foils, which have that, um, center of effort quite far back. And when I ride this, I have to actually move the mast quite far forward and I'll use those extra two holes on the plate to move the mast uh, even farther forward to get that position. Um, if you don't do that, just because the wing is sitting farther back, you will always have the feeling that you're not getting any lift out of the wing. So remember that if you do get one of these, also the, the W800, same thing, needs to be moved forward. Anything that's being flown on the kite fuselage needs to go five centimeter farther forward in the tracks. All right, so are there any questions from anybody? Um, the question is, anybody still, is the sound actually working? 
Ah, cool, Paulo. <laughs> yep, that's what those um, things are for. Um, on a durability standpoint, uh, this is a new one I just received because I actually had somebody beg me to sell them my old one. Um, my old one has hit the reef many, many times. It's the problem with having a good surf foil is that you do take too much risk. And it's taken the beating quite well, just scratches and your normal wingtip things. The wingtips are actually quite durable on this. They, if you can see this, they are thin, but they're actually not like super sharp and thin. Um, Moses typical on the trailing edge. The trailing edge is sanded with that 30 degree angle, so it doesn't make any noise. It is pretty sharp. Um, remember that if you are not really full on into speed and so on, and you're more into winging and freestyling, you might want to sand that edge down just a little bit, just on a safety standpoint. Um, if you don't care about the safety and you just want to go fast and you want to get the maximum efficiency out, um, you can leave that 30 degree sharp edge in there. Uh, some questions? Um, Dabbler, I just did it. Um, like I said, compared to the 1,100, you need to move the 1,000, or the 95, you need to move the 1,005 centimeters forward. And if you're compared to the 950, you need to move it centimeter, uh, seven centimeters farther forward. Not sure if Davor actually understands English, so do it in German. Uh, Davor, um, du musst die Platte fünf Zentimeter weiter nach vorne schieben mit dem Tausender äh, im Vergleich mit dem 950er oder dem 1100er. Um, okay, Paolo, you're asking about ventilation. Um, Ventilation is if any part of the foil breaches the surface of the water and then that breach allows air to travel down towards the rest of the foil, basically creating an air bubble around your foil, which causes you to, as people call it, spin out, or in my opinion, just lose, uh, it's called losing lift and then you'll just drop off the foil. That's not to be um, confused with cavitation. Cavitation is if you are going fast enough or uh, create enough uh, pressure on the wing that you create a too large pressure differential between the bottom and top um, surfaces of, of any wing, um, it basically starts boiling off the water off the surface. And then you start getting air, it creating its own air around itself um, underwater. So basically cavitation happens underwater, ventilation happens basically at the boundary at the water surface area and allows air to be sucked down onto the foil. Mainly it's a more of an issue with the mast um, or like I said, wingtips when you're breaching, if you don't push hard enough, that air can travel down and cause you to crash. Uh, the wingspan, one meter, 1000 millimeters, 100 centimeters. Um, Compare with similar foils from other brands. That's difficult because they're they're not any. Um, the closest I can compare to this would be the Axis eleven fifty, and that's not even close. The eleven fifty is a little bit less high aspect, and then you've got the thirteen hundred. But the thirteen hundred is larger. It's but it's got thirty centimeters more span. Um, but if I had to compare it to those, I mean, I've not had a lot of time on the 1300, to be honest. Um, it's just basically just as glidey, faster. Um, this has a thinner profile, so it's a bit sort of smoother gliding. But again, this is just from like, I think I'm 20 minutes on the, the 1300. Um, if you want me to compare it, I mean, a lot of people want a comparison to the, that's called the pseudo high aspect ratio foils from other brands like the, the Phantom and uh, from F1, for example, um, which however are more in the aspect ratio range of between seven and eight, which are medium aspect ratio wings. Um, it's a lot faster, for example, than the, let's compare it to the, the Phantom 1080, 
this is a lot faster, but needs a bit more wind to get going. Um, the speed difference is quite large. They're both just as turny if you use the Phantom on the short fuselage that they have. If you use it on the standard fuselage, this turns a lot faster if you're comparing it like that. Um, don't really, I mean, there's so many foils I can compare it to. If you have something spe a specific foil you want me to compare it to and I've written it, um, you can put that in the comment. Um, long carbon Moses mast, 101, 11 centimeters are stiff enough for this wing. Uh, long racing fuels will work. Yes. Okay. Uh, one question after the other from Smith Armstrong. So first of all, yes, the 101 and the the like high modulus carbon race mass, the the 111s, and actually also the 106 work well with this. Um, it's still a, the 101 is still a bit more wobbly compared to the racing mass or using the 82. Um, but it still works. Um, the main reason is because this doesn't create so much pressure tip to tip compared to like the 1100 or the 790. Um, it doesn't bend the mast as much against a smaller board. That said, um, when it's windy, I mainly ride this on smaller boards on 55 liters, like five foot threes or below. So I'm using that with smaller boards when I'm using the longer masts. So um, if you're using a 100 liter board on this, I'm pretty sure the 101 would be pretty bendy too. Um, it can be used with the, with the 1150 um, long racing fuselage. That's what it's primarily designed for. Um, um, you can use that setup if you put a windsurfing mast in, for example, uh, an old kiteboarding race board, you know, where you've got the tuttle all the way back or wind foiling and stuff like that. Um, I know I'm talking a lot about winging, but wing foiling, uh, wind foiling with this is super cool. It's super fast. Uh, maneuvers are actually really easy. Um, it almost wants you to like force it to jump, but that's not something I recommend with super long fuselage and generally with uh, wind foiling, asking to break stuff. But if you have the level, this will really be fun. Um, How long for wind wind foiling or wing foiling? Um, I mean, that's personal choice. I mean, for uh, freestyle and jumping, I prefer longer masts. Um, actually, my sweet spot at the moment is like ninety. Um, at the moment, when I'm free riding for myself, I will be. I use that Project Cedrus mast, which ends up at ninety-one centimeters, um, and that's quite a stiff mast. So for jumping, freestyling, and wave riding with this. I like 91. Um, if I'm race training, and this is an exclusive, I'm actually telling you guys what I'm actually training on for racing. I'm actually using the 106 mast with a 10 centimeter adapter to make it onto a plate um, for racing training. Okay, so I'm essentially at uh, 116 centimeter mast for racing, which really allows me to heal over the foil completely without uh, breaching and get, getting the board as low as possible, okay? Um, I mean, most people are pretty happy between 75 and 80 centimeters for most wing foiling, especially here on the island. A lot of the wave spots are um, shallow. So um, I actually have quite a lot of ground contact because I'm using longer masts. Um, so the guys on between 70 and 82 um, have a bit more, call it buffer, before they hit the rocks. Can you compare the W800 versus the 1000 in strong wind? Um, actually, I actually was going to do another review for the, for the 800 anyway next week. But basically, the, the 671, the 800, and the 1000 are essentially same family of wings. You can call them basically brothers. The... 800, the only thing that I would say it's a bit different, it does not go upwind at a high angle, as high an angle as the 1,000 does. Um, that's mainly because it's a slightly less aspect ratio than that. Um, it is, however, slightly faster in um, forward speed. And hmm, 
Yeah, and it's more fun for jumping because it's a smaller wing. Uh, but it does need about five knots more. I prefer the W800 when the wind goes over 25 knots and uh, when I'm actually really powered on a four meter. Does it? Does the wing whistle when riding? Um, not if it you've taken care of it properly or if it's been sanded properly. Uh, if it is whistling, remember you can just uh, clean up the trailing edge a bit and it should stop whistling. Uh, when I ride the sound, Paul was saying, sometimes it skids when going fast. I've experienced that. No, I haven't. Um, that's actually, I actually have the opposite. Like I said, it doesn't want to do that with me. Um, normally, anything with any foil trying to skid out laterally just means it's pulling air from somewhere, typically, and then losing adhesion to the water. Or it could also be you're hitting a cross current. That is always a possibility. Uh, Paulo, is this happening when you're quite heeled over, or is this sort of when you're going flat, or is this in a hard carve or a turn? What stab do you use for freestyle with the 1100? I use the 400, the S400. I find the S400 for me is the one that... Uh, is the one. It happens when you're going flat. I would check your mast. If it's happening when you're going flat, it might be that uh, your mast is pulling air. Uh, is your mast totally clean, Paulo? Um, sun cream on mast, like fingerprints with sun cream on your, on your mast will cause uh, ventilation and that could cause a sideways slip. The best thing is if you can is try to have somebody film your mast or put a camera on the bottom of your board and then you can see it happening. If you see air bubbles starting around your mast, that's that's the ventilation. Ollie and pumping for wing foiling compared to the 1,100. Okay, pumping. This is a, this is where we get into sort of a, the territory of high high performance wings versus Let's, let's say thicker profiled wings. Um, the best actually story I have for you there is when I'm surf foiling, if I have a completely glassy day, zero wind, so no headwind or anything like that, this is amazing. For some reason, I can pump this at a much longer distance with less energy expended as long as I don't have any wind against me, any resistance. Um, I really love it when I have conditions like that. However, as soon as you get a bit of headwind on it and you get resistance and you start um, slowing down when you're pumping back out against the wind, for example, an onshore wind, um, there I find that the 1100 is easier. You don't have that speed, but you can keep that low speed going and going. Once this falls below um, like 20 kilometers an hour, um, you will start dropping off the foil. You lose that height. But if you don't have that headwind, you can pump almost indefinitely if you have the energy and you're going fast. So you're not doing like heavy, hard pumps. You're doing short pumps and short bursts, but those bursts carry you longer because you have a much higher lift to drag. So in German, we call it Gleitzau, which basically means for a given distance, how much you drop. And that's got a very high um, lift to drag ratio and it allows you to efficiently pump as long as you don't have any resistance to yourself like wind. Um, com I mean, the 950 is pretty good compared to the 1100 for, for pumping efficiently. But again, um, this is faster, so you can cover more distance as long as you don't have resistance. If you have some headwind or something like that, the 950 or the 1100 are easier to pump. Better or worse is it's all relative, and it comes down to preference. Regarding scratches on the wings, especially around the wing tips, can they be sanded, repaired, mostly re-scratches? Uh, what I do for scratches is I get marine filler, proper epoxy marine filler, and basically fill the scratches. Um, I don't sand out scratches because that's what you're doing is taking away a lot, a lot of material to get rid of a small problem. So I will filler the um, scratches, and that's it. Marine epoxy, you don't need to paint over or anything. So if you look closely at some of my older foils, you'll see like white streaks all through them. That's where the marine filler is on there. If your wingtip, however, has a crack in it, so um, there's actually water coming out of it, like when you're drying it, 
that you need to properly let dry and then properly repair that, which means sand it open, um, laminate over it with either some fiberglass or preferably a thin layer of carbon, filler it again, and then repair it properly. But scratches, you can just filler. Um, and typically scratches on the wingtip don't hinder the performance for, for example, for wing foiling or surf, surf foiling. It's something when you're racing that will cost you half a percentage point somewhere along the line, but it's not going to be something that will cause extra ventilation or slow you down too much. So small scratches, don't worry about it too much. Um, okay. Can a thousand go slow enough for riding wind waves like Flag Beach? Yes, it can. That's the cool thing about an efficient wing. It Once it's gliding, it can stay gliding. for the, As long as you have a small wave, it will go. Um, and it'll keep up speed. The thing is, again, I mentioned before, you have to ride it differently. This wing won't just stay on that small wave. It'll join the wave and then accelerate away from it. So what you need to do is, once you've gotten one or two meters away from that wave, is to turn back hard towards that wave and go along the wave sideways, or do a cutback and go it. If you see me riding on this, I'm doing a lot of things. I'm basically cutting back, going um, side to side on that wave, staying on the wave face. And if it's anything above um, waist high, I'm trying to stay at the top of the wave. So I'll go all the way after the bottom, I'll go all the way up to there, cut back at the top, and then I won't go all the way back to the bottom to bottom turn. I'll try to turn on the face and stay um, basically between halfway up the face and the top of the wave with this. And saying that the waves at flag are not slow. They're actually pretty fast. I mean, even like the last post I did with the 950, I was going close to 40 kilometers an hour on one of some of the bigger ones we had there, um, even when it turned into a bump. So the waves can still be pretty quick. Can I use it for kite foiling? Yes. Do you need, need it for kite foiling? If you're a heavy guy, if you're 100 kilos plus, sure, that's fine. I mean, I had a lot of fun kite foiling with this when I was testing it, but it's it's unnecessary. It's, it's just, uh, it can get going in virtually no wind. It's the same reason like um, the 950 or the 1100. Sure, you can kite with it. There's nothing that says you can't, but um, there's no reason to. It's much more fun, actually. We'll get to that in the next review. The, the W800 is my all-time favorite kite foiling um, front wing at the moment. That's amazing. It doesn't have the span. Um, for kite foiling, because you have the kite, um, your low end stays pretty much the same. Once you get to about six, seven knots, I mean, it's more about your kite flying. And when your kite's flying, any kite foil with over 600 um, square centimeters area will work. Um, so having something like this that's super high performance and has that much area, it'll work, it's fine. But remember, this is pretty high span, so it'll limit what you can do. I mean, sure, it's still fun, but your radiuses are slightly larger than they need to be. There, the 800 is a bit tighter, and, you don't, and you're constantly breaching unless you're on a long mast. You're, uh, yeah, so I mean, you can kite with it. Don't really recommend you do. Okay. All right, next question. Will this wing glide through wind wing and wind foiling jibes, etc., easier than the other wings like 1100? Um, yes and no. Now, it depends what you mean with glide. Um, what a lot of people consider glide is the ability of the foil to stay flying in um, low speeds. Um, they can all sort of do this. Obviously, the 1100 is better at staying up and gliding and keeping your weight over the water, so it'll allow you to you know, do that maneuver slower. Um, however, you are very limited 
to a fairly wide radius when you do that on that size of wing because it's it needs that radius to turn. Whereas here, because you don't need that radius, you can actually go faster through it. So in theory, as it's more efficient, it'll glide faster on a tighter radius um, and it won't slow down. Whereas the 1100, the 790, the 950, if you try to force the radius to be smaller, they will slow down and sort of just drop off the foil, whereas this can be slammed around tightly while it will still glide. But if you're trying to do the maneuver slowly, it won't work as well as the 1100, which will allow you to do a huge radius turn, uh, switch your feet very, very slowly, and so on, it will stay flying. Uh, with the 950, you said it needs to be placed more to the back. Uh, this one more to the front. Do boards in general have enough range in the boxes? Yes. Like I said, I mean, Moses have made it easy. They've added those two extra holes in the middle of the plate, which allow you to move the uh, plate farther forward than you would normally do with the two standard holes. So you've got about five centimeters there anyway. And for example, the F1 boards have the tracks quite far forward anyway. They've got a very similar uh, geometry to the Moses kite foil mast anyway. So that's why they have their tracks quite far forward. So there it doesn't matter, but I haven't yet to encounter a board where I would say this would definitely not fit in. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that most boards will fit this unless there's some weird exceptions. Okay. All right, we have gone past the half an hour mark already. So unless there's another question within the next sort of 20 seconds, um, I will sort of conclude. So any questions? Perfect. OK, so basically in conclusion, oh wait, there's another. Mike Miller, shim under stabilizer should help for fit. For, for lift? No, it doesn't. What length of fuse do you recommend for wing and wind foiling? Um, I mean, I don't re really recommend anything. I mean, um, with Moses, you have, for, for normal winging, if you're using a proper wing board, you have one choice. That's the kite fuselage. That's a 647. And if you're going to be wind foiling, you have the only option that this goes on to is the 1150 race fuselage. So there's no other recommendation I can really make. If I had a choice and I could tell Moses, what fuselage should you make? I would love to have this on a really short fuselage, like my North foils that I have. I really like those like 60 cm fuselages. They make the wings super turny, even if they're low aspect, high aspect, it doesn't matter. It makes the wings so much more fun. But at the moment, your choices with Moses are kite fuselage or the race wind, wind fuselage. Um, what was the other question? Shim, like Mike, Mike um, when it comes to talking about lift, adding a shim doesn't actually create more lift. What you're doing is creating more downforce on the stabilizer, which will basically try to angle the nose of the board higher as the as the foil is flying. So instead of, for example, at this, if we have everything neutral, the foil will be flying like this. When you increase the angle of the stabilizer, it will basically have the foil flying higher at a higher angle of attack, which pushes your nose up. It you know gives you more front foot pressure, but it's not actually creating more lift. It can actually reduce the actual lift because it's actually dragging and slowing you down. The reason you would put the shim on if you're going to use um the surf stabilizers on the kite fuselage is that the kite fuselage's um profile for the stabilizer is smaller than the one on for the surf foils because the surf foil stabilizers have more cord so if you just put the 450 on the 647 fuselage for example it's actually being cut by the edge of the of the fuselage of that that bearing point so if you need to put at least the one degree shim under there to lift it off or any piece of plastic, just so you're not sitting on that. Kim, who is it? Where? Um, 
Would the 101 mass work with the 6, the 9450 wing set? Yes, it'll work fine. With the T35 board, yes, it should work. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Haslam, yeah, um, you can use the 101 mass with the 679. Uh, six, should be no problem. Okay. Will I be doing reviews like this for wind wings you have access to? I that's a good question. I the problem is I don't I it's my room is small. I can't really put uh, most wings in here. But if you guys actually want to hear me talk about wings without actually seeing them in the room or having them deflated in the room, sure, I'll do that. So um after the video, put that in the comments below and let's see how many people actually want to see wing reviews. With the same format. Otherwise, I'm going to do the reviews for the Tacoons, for example, and um, actually Harlem. I'm doing a review for their one, if you know what that brand is from Holland. Um, the other ones, I can do a review. If you want, I mean, I've had a chance now to try the F1 Strike, for example. I can do, we can do sort of a tech talk. Um, so if you want to hear me talk about wings in this sort of format, dump a comment in, in the comments below and we'll see how many people want that. Otherwise, I'll be doing the wing reviews as standard. And just remember, um, when North bring out their wing, pretty much I'm not going to be doing any more wing reviews because it'll be a bit of a conflict of interest because I am a North team rider. Uh, what shim do you, with the 400? No, I don't, with the, with this, with the normal kite foiling shims, uh, um, Kite foiling uh, stabilizers, I don't use any shims. I use the S400 as standard on the fuselage. OK, we're almost at 40 minutes. So I really got to wrap this up, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, remember to put um, any comments you have in the comments below. I'm happy to answer any questions. Remember, uh, if you like the content, what I'm doing here, to click the subscribe button if you haven't already and click the bell. And like I said, if you want to help us out financially here with doing all this stuff and you know getting the equipment here, it's not free, um, you can also buy me a coffee. The link is in the description below. Thank you very much for watching. See you guys on the water. And then see you next week for a bunch more live reviews, like for the W800 um, and the North Sonar foils and maybe some wing reviews. Thanks for watching. Rock on.